Now, the family of a woman who was kidnapped and murdered in a shocking case of mistaken identity. So they believe they know where her body is buried. Yeah, after more than 50 years, Muriel McKay was held hostage after two men confused her with the then wife of the media mogul Rupert Murdoch in 1969. Now, after a remarkable meeting with her kidnapper, Muriel's daughter Diane and grandson Mark want police to help recover her body, which has never been found. We're going to speak to them in just a moment. It is a remarkable story. It's just extraordinary. It gets no less extraordinary every time we hear more about it. Um, mm -hmm. Diane, I know that you two of you have just come back from Trinidad, where you've been speaking to your mother's killer. I wonder, firstly, what that experience was like for you, coming face to face with him and, and actually trying to talk to him. The whole experience has been quite surreal. You, I never wanted to meet him. I imagined he was dead until we saw him on this uh, documentary and we thought, he's still talking, he's alive. Why don't we ask him? You know, that was when the idea came to, to ask him, what did he do with my mother's body? What really happened? But that's been a long haul. There was a, there was a, there was a documentary, wasn't there, about the kidnapping? Yes. And it was watching that documentary. It was the first you knew that he was still alive? Yes, absolutely. So we saw in the... The piece there, when you greeted him, mm. you gave him a hug, you seemed very familiar, you gave him a kiss. People watch and think, you know, I wonder how you did that or why you oh, did that. Oh, I know, that. I look like a weirdo. <laughs> we, we arrived there in a great rush and, and we were warned by our lawyer. He said, well, he did, a, he did a runner this morning, I hope he's not going to do another one. You know, we were scared that we'd come all that way and he might not stay there. So we rushed in. I, mean, I never even stopped to brush my hair, you can see that. I look like the mad woman, but... Um, you know, it didn't matter. The most important thing was to get to him. Yes, and to and talk to him, him. So you wanted to, so you want, didn't want to put him and on he, the And when he saw me, he'd seen me on videos before because we, well, he knew me when I was very young and he was 19 and I was 28 or 29. And so he always related to me for some extraordinary reason. And, um, this well... This is part of this, this strange relationship, connection that you have, because, of course, he was the voice at one end of a phone. That's right. Asking for a ransom, and you were the voice at the and other end. And at that stage, they often had me on television appeals and things. I was young and I was pretty, so I was quite useful. But the whole thing was, I was also terribly upset. So I had very emotional interviews at that stage. But he related to me from that time. So um, you have a strange and, and awful connection with him. Awful. Because he murdered your mother. Awful. Oh, it's awful. It's horrible. But the whole thing is, I don't think about that. I put myself in another place because I need information from him. Mm. I'm quite happy to, to um, embrace him. That's what he wanted. This wasn't my idea. It wasn't planned. He just threw himself at me. Mm. What could I do? I want information. I'm not going to draw a knife and he, say he I hate you. He was, in fact, it. delighted. I mean, his face lit up. Yes. Well, uh, it was a bit like, this is your life, because I bounded up to him. We decided we'd be, like, best mates. On the plane on the way out, we said, let's just forget who he is. We're going to see an old chum. And so I you're playing a part, really. Absolutely. We were I'd, all acting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had to. To get this you know, So we bound, And I'd had many telephone calls with him over the last couple of years and quite a lot of co uh, communication. And there was the, what I called the disclosure, November 21, when he disclosed... In the middle of the night, I was called and everyone said, you've got to come to the phone. He's telling everything. And he told the whole story about how my grandmother died on New Year's Eve in front of the television, which I thought, I kept saying was sugar-coated mm -hmm. because, you know, and, I, and all this weekend I was saying, you sugar-coated it, you sugar-coating sugar stuff. And he said, maybe, maybe. Because he claims that your grandmother died uh, of natural causes when she was watching an appeal by the family. Yes. He, de he denies that he's responsible for yes, exactly. her exactly, and he doesn't want to enlarge... Do you, do you know I believe that, Suzanne? I, we I, try. I, I believe that he's, he's not... I didn't believe that he didn't kill my grandmother. He didn't want her dead because he wanted a million quid. Mm. She, you know, so this wasn't a, a murder. This was... They didn't go out to kill her. They wanted, to, they wanted the money and her to go. So the, the, the challenge for going over there and meeting him was to try and get this information, trying to get him to pinpoint where on the farm where she was held that they have buried the body. Mark, you feel like you have got that information. He has given you that information. This 100%. is a farm in Hertfordshire where the police but, have previously dug 
but haven't found. Yeah, 100% she's there. Look, she, I mean, we've had hours and hours. We had 16 hours with Nizam. He was sitting between us. You know, we were holding his hands sometimes. Um, he was breathless, and I think you've got a piece. I've seen it this morning. <sighs> My mother's saying, breathe slowly. She's helping him. She, she's, she's nursing him through the experience because... At one stage, he was eating. He loves eating because he never eats enough, I think. And we always give him sandwiches and he, he's got no teeth. So he, he eats and eats and eats the whole time. As long as you keep feeding him, he'll keep talking. Mm. But the thing was, he said, bang me on the back, bang me on the back to me. And I thought, oh, my God. So I <laughs> tucked him on the back and he said, harder. So I whacked him on the back <laughs> because he said he was choking. But, I mean... I never expected this to go this way. Sounds I mean, absurd, yeah. you know, for honest truth, we can be honest. We never wanted it to be a public spectacle. Mm. We didn't. We did this on our own, at our own efforts and time and. and so we, you've, you've we got this information, yeah. But what you want is permission to try and find your grandmother. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've asked time and time again if I can dig my grandmother up, and it's absurd. And everyone says you can't have your grandmother. They want to keep her at the farm. Why? Who wants to keep her at the farm? Well, <laughs> ask the Why? police. I mean, they don't believe that we've got good enough evidence. Yeah. Now, what is good enough evidence? 16 hours of video with a, with a convicted life... There's some footage there, some pictures. They have actually done some digging at the farm previously oh, yeah. in an area that they were led to believe maybe where her body was. But he has he pointed now at a different location. He never pointed at that location. No. So where they what, dug. Where they dug. So what happened was, we were... Our, all our evidence was dissed. Oh, well, he said it's under the, under the muck heap. I said, the muck heap's an acre. We can only do a restricted search. We'll go for the area where the biggest amount of muck heap was. They didn't... They were working off Getty images. They didn't even get the original files mm. from Richmond. We actually went there and got them. Yeah. We've actually got his prison records. We've got... We've built up... My legal team in London have built up the most incredible database of information. How, how small an area have you narrowed down the dig to, if you well, were allowed you've got to it. carry it you, out? You've, you've got it. You've played it... Have you, have you yeah. played it this morning? Here you go. Uh, um, here it is. So there, he's that. pointing to the exact area There's where... my mother. Yes. This is 72 hours ago. This is us sitting. We, were, we did... This is the first eight-hour session. Mark, the, the, the police will say, and they've been in scenarios like this, where killers who are in prison enjoy the attention and they say, this is where the body is, I can get the body. He wants he's to come over here and show you... He's been out of prison for 30 years. No, but, but, <laughs> their, but, the, but their point is... Is there a sense, and it sounds like he does like the attention from the two of you, certainly, is there a sense that he's... He's maybe giving you what you want to hear because You've got actually the attention thing it. wrong. You've got the attention thing yeah. wrong. He doesn't want the attention. He actually said to me, this is a big problem for me. Right. Mm. A child came up to me the other mm. day in the shop and said, are you going to kill my mother? So he still has that reputation in Trinidad? No, yes. he's got the reputation. Yeah, he still Because yeah. of what the information is disclosing yeah. to us. Yeah. So he wants this. He wants to put your mother Settlement. rest. That's what he says. He wants to put it to rest so he can die feeling like he's made a confession. He's been in denial yeah. all his life, mm -hmm. until now. We are the first people he's told mm -hmm. that he was guilty, that he was in the kidnapping, that he was there, it was him. We and believe there were three. Me, it was oh. M3. So I said to him, why M3? He said, M3 motorway. I said, come on. So yeah. he, he comes up with absurd They're stuff. They're like little that. boys. But you trust him on the identity of the location and you yes. just need the The one thing, the Susanna, police. he has been consistent about yeah. Um, for the last two and a half years is my grandmother is three foot behind the barn. Yeah. And where the animal drop-ins area is, I'm okay. doing his action. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, this is what the Scotland Yard spokesperson says. We remain in regular contact with Muriel's family. We will review any new information. The head of the Met Police, Mark Rowley, said in an interview, if we can narrow it down to be a sufficiently concrete about where we need to look, then we will get a warrant and we will do that. And you believe you have that concrete information. Do you know what? If I was in your position, I'd feel exactly Absolutely. the same. That's the you, reason we went. You want we're your so mother to Some of the police the officers who are involved in this day of actually goes and saying, get on with it, do it yourself. Yes. We would actually almost prefer... They are actually Well, you can't... It's owned, of course, I mean, it's... by a landowner and a farmer. Yeah. Look, we... Good luck.
Oh, so thank you. Thanks say for having luck. us on. Thanks thank for you. listening to it all. Thank you so because much. Because it's really helpful. We never wanted this so public. No. no. I can tell you this. We wanted well, you never to do wanted this to be in this situation. No never. Hopefully it can thank help in some both. way. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you.